Hello and welcome back to the official Scottish Rugby Podcast. Rachel, we're going to get right into it. Uh, the 1872 Cup was back at the weekend. Glasgow versus Edmund BT Murrayfield. Well, Hamish Watson uh, joins us now, fresh after the escapades at the weekend. Back in the field, most of the time I saw you, Hamish, running about with a big smile on your face. How good was it and how happy did you feel to be back? Yeah, all the boys were extremely happy to be back. It's It's been a long, a long, long time. I think it was almost six months from that from that game we played against France in the Six Nations. So there's a few uh, few sore bodies today in training and we've just all got to try and get fit for a, for a fairly quick turnaround now. But great to be back. I think the boys loved it and it was, it was great to get the win as well. How were the first 20 minutes getting back up to speed? How long did it take to get your second win and get going again? Yeah, it was, it was, it's, one of those, it's one of those ones where it takes, takes a while to get that second win. Once, once that came in, I think, uh, I think it was all right. I think we probably were... Oh, I'm going to be a bit biased, but I think we sort of were the fitter of the two teams in that second half. We sort of, we sort of started controlling the game a bit more and came into our own a bit. Uh, but that first 20 minutes, nothing, no matter what you do in your, your pre-season, nothing can prepare you for mm. for that sort of match intensity. You know, you can try and replicate it. You can do in-house games against against each other, but nothing's quite like playing another team. And especially when you play uh, play your rivals, Glasgow, they're, they're always such tough physical encounters. But uh, but yeah, it was um, great to get going again, and um, yeah, great to get was, the win. Was there nervousness as well? Like obviously, at the start of every season, from such a long layoff, there's there's, there's an extra added nervousness just because you're not used to the preparation. Was it a wee bit like that on on Saturday? Extra nerves? Yeah, definitely some extra nerves. I was I was quite nervous going to the game, and you don't, you didn't know really quite what to expect with with the whole no crowd thing. It, the last time we played at Murrayfield, it was it was obviously for an international, so it was it was very different for Edinburgh games. We 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 get about what six six thousand, so I know that's that's not much inside a a big stadium like Murrayfield, but it does make a huge difference going to no fans. So that was something the boys had to try, kind of overcome as well, and I suppose just all of us as professional athletes just have to sort of get over that because that's that's what the game looks like moving forward now for for at least the next. The next wee while, anyway. So we had to we had to get over that and uh, a bit of nerves. I think I think Stuart McAnally was still did his uh, pre match ritual of being sick on the pitch on the way out, which isn't <laughs> isn't following the COVID protocols. But you know, um, uh, yeah. So a bit of nerves, but it was it was it was great to get back out there, and I know all the boys all the boys really enjoyed it. Well, you have a thousand or a thousand people in and around the stadium this Friday, which is an amazing uh, kind of step forward for everyone. Obviously, a pilot event and a lot of eyes on BT Manifield, but. You could be less nervous this weekend with, well, I think maybe about 700 fans. And so that, even though that's a small number, that will make a difference. It'll take away that, that kind of hollow feeling you, you've uh, described already. Yeah, it's going to be weird. I was, I was, when I heard that, that we're having like 700 or 1,000 fans in, that's going, to be, um, that's going to be really weird because you'll be able to hear almost what <laughs> every fan's saying. It's not, like, it's not like loads of fans shouting. So it should be quite interesting. I don't know um, how, they're, how they're doing it or how they're organising it, but it'll be great to get get some fans in at least yeah on, the, on that point about you being able to hear the, the, the crowd if there's only 700 that means they might be able to hear you answering back to them there's a positive yeah exactly I think I think on <laughs> I don't know on the ref mic I think you could hear hear quite a bit of the bickering between players but I suppose it's quite nice for fans they get they get a bit of an insight as long as there's not too much swearing and stuff in front of kids they get a bit of an insight into what what sort of players are talking about and and no, definitely the Glasgow boys were trying to get stuck into all of us. And I don't know, if, yeah, I don't know if you could hear that over the ref mic, but it gives sort of fans a bit of an insight into into sort of the player chat, which is which is quite nice, I suppose. But as you mentioned the start, and it was actually a cracking start for Edinburgh, wasn't it? You got kind of six points up before it, uh, Glasgow hit back. But I said this to you before, because it was the first game for so long. We all know that we've all watched. Well, I've certainly watched a lot of the games, Southern Hemisphere and the Premiership games in England after a long break and there have been kind of stuttered starts but I thought you guys Edinburgh team started really well and had a lot of cohesion Glasgow came back into it you had to wrestle the game back to get the win on a couple of occasions but I don't know how you feel on the field or, or what you think Rachel but I thought that the product overall was actually really quite strong for well, considering how long you'd, you'd been off I thought so as well I thought it was a great start by us we, we started really strongly got, got 6-0 into the lead which gave us a gave us a good um good confidence booster, and then we sort of let Glasgow get back into it a bit. 
uh, you know, Glasgow are a great team, so we knew it was, was never going to be an easy re- an easy ride by any stretch of the imagination. And we had a chance at half time to to get some points, and unfortunately went in went in at the break behind. And we still thought, even though we went in behind, we thought that we we probably were edging it slightly, even though Glasgow were in the lead. And we sort of stuck to our guns in that second half, made made a few less errors, and they they probably weren't too happy with the way the breakdown went for them. I think we we dominate that breakdown battle with under the new under the new rules so I think that really helped us gain a field a field position and eventually you know the cracks started to show and we we got a few great finishes from um mm-hmm. one set up from Duan where Groomy scored and then mm-hmm. obviously a bit of magic by um by mm-hmm. Chico mm-hmm. yeah so around that breakdown stuff obviously it's been a massive talking point um the last wee while while, while rugby's been coming back as someone who's a bit of a well, what you might call a breakdown specialist. How did you, how did you find it with kind of not necessarily the new rules, but the the new way the rules are being refereed? So, did you find it changed the way you played? Did it help you or opposite? Yeah, I think it's something that we're all going to have to get used to. It's it's going to benefit uh, open side flankers in the back row and anyone who really likes a jackal a bit more because it doesn't look like you're needing to survive the clear out for for quite as long. They've also cracked down and just trying to protect the jack row a bit from side entries, which I, th- I definitely agree with the side entry one. I think that's that's yeah, a really good thing because last season that was sort of getting a bit out of hand with people coming in at forty five degree angles and just just taking away taking away legs really, and it, it you know it even looked it looked pretty illegal. So I th- I'm glad they've got got away with the side uh, the side entrance with the with the holding on stuff. I think it's a bit weird when we're just going to have to get used to it because. I thought maybe at times there were there were a few very quick ones and watching the Prem and a bit of the super stuff, I think the refs are blowing them very quickly. And I think that that might change, I think, the more we the more we see because I think it's meant to quicken up the game, but you're seeing a lot a lot of penalties and you yeah. only have to seem to be in there for a split second, which is great for for Jacklers, but I think you also you also do want the game to flow a bit. So I think that's something they might I think we saw at the start of the super stuff that there were what tw- almost thirty penalties a game, and now mm-hmm. towards the end it started um, refs and players started getting used to it a bit. And but it encourages the attacking team as well. It's just all about speed to the breakdown, really, which is which is a good thing as well. Have you guys taken any learnings from this week that you're going to take into next week with that in terms of what you've seen from what the ref did, but also like how you guys coped with it? Yeah, I think I think we coped. Probably better than Glasgow. I think we won that breakdown war. I think we got um, quite a few, quite a few mm-hmm. turnovers, or seven turnovers or so. So I think we were the better of the two teams. So it's just trying to that, that's something they'll be working on this week. They they probably know that we did edge that contest. I think they they maybe got they maybe got two two jackal turnovers, but it was other stuff as well. You know you know like sealing off, and uh, there was still a few side entries. And I think the refs are just gonna be a bit quicker on on certain stuff around the breakdown so we we've, we've got to it obviously worked for us this weekend so we got to, we got to stick to our guns and uh hopefully hope, we know it's going to be a crucial part of the game as well as you, as you could see from the game at the weekend so if we can dominate that again that's going to help us help us get the victory this weekend yeah it was uh, that I totally agree with what you're saying and, and how it's going to be refereed and it's good to get the players taking that as well like you thick reaction you're actually in it, 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 it affects you more than any of us or certainly Rachel when you get back as well but the whole idea is that it makes it safer so if you are the tackler you have to roll away quicker to, to make the picture clearer for the referee but also there's a responsibility on that jackler to try and lift the ball as well yeah. rather than just get in there and hold it and then get hit from two or three different angles but I, I noticed you guys do that you always do it you're, you're one of the kings of it Mish, getting in winning that turnover but if you think in the lead up to uh, Nick Groom's first try, he actually stole the ball about halfway. He won the turnover, and there was a turnover. I'm not sure who who won it for uh, Charlie Shields' try. Really, it was on. Bennett, I think. It was a Mark Bennett. So it's, it's across the it's across the board, and I think it's really refreshing to see players getting over the ball but winning it rather than just having the mindset of stopping the the opposition playing. Yeah, I agree definitely. I think as you just mentioned there, a few a few breakdowns were won by people you wouldn't usually expect as well so I think everyone's having a little nip at it knowing that it might not take quite as long to get them but you know we're just gonna have to see how it goes because I think referees will will adapt to it and I think it will take slightly longer a few of them you watch back and you're like oh gosh we were only on a split second there or or vice versa with some of the Glasgow ones uh 
but it's good for the game. And I think, like you say, if the, if the Jack was actually trying to rip the ball up, that's going to quicken up the game rather than them just staying in there and, and taking, um, taking the collision. So hopefully it speeds the game up a bit. What's training looking like this week? Obviously, first game back in a while, like we said, and then mm. quick turnaround into next week. So how's, how's the week looking in terms of build-up for, for the next game? So today, so today yeah, was our first game in. We had Sunday off, and like I was saying to, to you guys before, there's a few, there's a few weary bodies knocking around today, a few sore ones. Uh, I think there may be a few changes at the weekend just, just to try and look after a few boys, but we know that this... This game, I think we have secured that home semi-final now, but yep. by no stretch of the imagination, it's a dead rubber for us. We've got to go into the semi-final thinking we've got to keep our momentum. If we if we lose to Glasgow on Friday night, you know you know what it's like. At all sports, a, a game of confidence, really, as well. So we need to try and keep keep the momentum going and keep keep flying high. And for for Glasgow, it's it's one of those games that they're playing for pride. They're still playing against their rivals. They've got a big point to prove always when they play against Edinburgh, and likewise when we play against them, whether that's for uh, positional stuff, opposite opposite man sort of stuff, and they also know that after this they've got they've got four weeks off or however long they've got till their next game, so they can also sort of think, well, one one last push, try and beat our rivals, and then we get a bit of time off as well. So it's, there's motivation for both teams there, and I think it's hopefully it'll be a good game. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think, and, and again, I've gone back to the game quite closely this morning just for one or two things, and although it seemed comfortable man, end, 15 points to 30 scoreline, until about 60 minutes, I thought Glasgow were actually ahead in two or three different areas and and they did lose that breakdown battle, the penalty battle that, that cost them dear. So from their point of view, there'll be maybe three or four key moments in the game that they'll focus on that will give them more belief or, or added belief that they can come back up a, a reasonable performance with a winning performance next week. So so it will be another fierce encounter, um, whoever takes the field. And, and from your guys' point of view, home semi-final, uh, guaranteed against Ulster the following Saturday, I think. So you're all fighting for places as well. Definitely, I think I think the boys the boys know that you've got you've got to be with the squad we have at Edinburgh now as well. You've you've got to play well every game, whether it's whether it's mm-hmm. a game at this that that doesn't really determine where we're going to be playing the semi final or whether it's um a, you know whether it is a semi final or a final. We've always got to be on it. We've got players pushing for spots and. Like we say, these these games against Glasgow, they're never they're never a friendly. They're always a, as you can see from the weekend, they're always pretty physical battles with a with a lot of niggle, as you can see from the weekend as well. <laughs> I think um, there was a lot of afters in in various bits and bobs, but uh, that's that's the way it is. They're always they're always tightly contested, and you know there there is a lot a lot on the line in these games. So I'm sure the weekend the weekend will be no different. Can you share any of the the bits of niggle with us? I saw, honestly, I saw you smiling and giggling to yourself about three or four times. Is there anything you can hear? You know what? It's just small stuff with them, with Glasgow. I don't, I, you know, we've got a lot of Glasgow Warrior listeners on the pod, so I'm not going to get into details because I don't want to be hated by Glasgow Warrior fans. <laughs> it's just one of those games, you know, like, it's like any rivalry in any sport, but there always seems to be um, a bit of feistiness and it's, yeah. it's good for the fans and it's um, bar the odd scuffle that goes on a bit too long. It's, it's good to watch at times. Although I got involved in, in a bit of afters at one point. I was like, I'm too knackered for that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> after that, I'm absolutely shattered. And it's, it's, you get up and you're like, that wasn't, that wasn't worth it really. <laughs> so um, that's why I normally don't get involved in it. I'm trying to conserve my energy. Got it. And did you see any of the, um, the Connor Ulster game at all? I, did, I didn't watch any of that. I saw the, saw the result and I heard yeah. Connor played uh, pretty well. I watched a bit of... Watched a bit of the Leinster Munster stuff oh, when I got that back was in. Brutal, eh? Yeah, I watched the second half of that, and they they both looked uh, looked very good, very sharp. So they mm-hmm. sort of sort of um, come back where they left off, sort of thing. So mm-hmm. that will be um, if we meet any of them, they will be very tough games. Mm-hmm. How how is the vibe in camp in terms of that kind of? You've obviously got the Ulster game coming up, and then potentially, I think, what did we say? Was it seventeen weeks on the bounce? You said potentially. Could be, for it could be something like that. Yeah, with European semis and finals and how, starts next season. How do you guys feel in terms of approaching that big chunk of games and really important games as well? We we spoke about we spoke about it briefly. It's sort of this first block. We've very much taken it as we've got two against Glasgow, a semi final and a final. Hopefully, mm-hmm. all being well. So we're taking this first bit and. We'll worry about the next the next block later. It's been spoke about obviously a bit with the players that we've got 
you know, so many games on the bounce. And if we get to the court, if we get to the final of this and then the final of the other one, it could be it could be a long old season. But I think you can't look at it like that. You've got to take every game as it comes. And it's the same. We spoke about the semi-final a bit, obviously, this morning because that came out that hopefully, well, I think we have got that home semi-final now. But it's still very much our focus is on Glasgow because, like I said before, it's 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 a lot to do with confidence. Sport's a big confidence thing, especially rugby. So, so we've got to keep keep the ball rolling and keep our momentum going and uh, keep morale high in the camp as well and get get another win to put us in a, a great position against Ulster. It's quite a nice position to be in in terms of the type of rugby that you have got coming up. It is all very exciting. You know the kind of games that you play rugby for, isn't it? In terms of your semi-finals, your finals, your rivalries with local teams and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff that players like dream about in terms of their their careers. So I guess you're in a pretty nice spot in the moment that you've got kind of game after game that is like that kind of cup final rugby. Yeah, one hundred percent. We we spoke about that in the pre-season block as well. Before we got into the games, we sort of saw these as as four four cup finals, like you say, because. Mm-hmm. We knew we had to win at least one of the Glasgow games to try and secure that home semi-final. And if if Munster would have won, we probably well we would have had to win both of them. So before we went into this, we saw them as as like you say four cup finals and in this mini block. And then and then this is a sort of then obviously you have got the European stuff. But like you say, it's the rugby you want to be playing. You're playing top teams. Glasgow are a top team. They're in the final last year. They won it um, a few years ago now, and they're they're a top team. Then you got Ulster. And then you know who who knows who you've got in the final Munster or Leinster. So it's uh, these are these are the games you want to play in. And minus minus the slight lack of fans, um, <laughs> yeah, they're all they're all massive games. It's a big squad effort. I know we've touched on it before. Maybe going over kind of something you said already, but because of the condensed nature of these uh, fixtures, and then you could have this big block of fixtures running into each other as well as international. You're going to need the squad depth, and that was one positive from my point of view on, on, on Saturday for you guys, the guys that came off the bench really made an impact. Those guys came on at half time uh, and then you're bringing on Cap Internationals like Nick Haining um, and, and and the guys up front, the front row change and me, Charlie Shield comes on and scores a, a wonder <laughs> try, didn't he? he was, uh, uh, you know, from your point of view, how, how good was that to not only come on and the game's hard enough to get your second win but to not have played for so long and then come on and make the impact these guys made off the bench? Yeah, we know how important the bench is nowadays in rugby and it's it's a huge energy booster when you see people like that coming on and all our, our props swapped at half-time as well and gave a real impact. And I think it's a testament to, to our whole squad, really, that we can we can sort of make those sort of changes at half-time and everyone goes about their bu- their business and not much changes. We've got we've got now a, a, such a big uh, a big squad and such a good squad that you can you can have two 15s and you know there's not there's not too much difference between us we played a we played a short 20 minutes in house game and you know we had a 215 split and and they were pretty even as well so it's mm. it's um it's great that we've got such good squad depth now and like you say if there's a few injuries cuz like like we have got a few injuries in the in the second row and a couple in the back row that boys boys just step up and get on with it and they know they know exactly what they have to do their job and in training again the, the People sometimes forget the preparation that goes into these games. We've had four weeks of preparing for Glasgow now and doing some of their stuff, what we think they're going to do. And our non-23 preparers amazingly well for that and are quite a lot of the time on top of us in training sessions as well, which, which, helps, which helps the match 23 train better, you know, and they, they sort of bring the, atten- uh, the intensity and you've got to as the match 23 match that. So, so that's great as well. And uh, yeah, so it's a massive squad effort. I don't think I ever won a team run against an on twenty three. You know that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Always happens. It's, um, it's very funny. It's shoulders on, but you've got boys flying in, leg chopping, <laughs> leg chopping, match twenty three and stuff. Very frustrating at times, but you can. Uh, it prepares as well. I did do a wee bit deeper thinking into it when I, I used to get myself really frustrated and think, how, how can this be? But obviously, the non twenty three knew exactly what we were going to do as well. So it was a bit of inside <laughs> info for the leg chopping and this flying well, exactly. it like smashing yeah, it. Exactly. The second row you mentioned, though, I thought Andrew Davidson was having a, a great debut as well. He he went off and then replaced by uh, Jamie Hudson, who was who was outstanding as well. So just the example you gave of the second row that you've got so much depth through Gilco and Ben Toulis and all the others that the, uh, the the young players coming in really give that depth and it, it's important now, but it'll be important as the season goes on as well. So. Uh, hopefully in a good position for a uh, a historic season. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Like you say, you've got 
you got Benny Tulis out, Lewis uh, Lewis Carmichael out, and then we've had um, we've had other boys step up now, like mm. like Big Bubba, who um, who had a really good first twenty minutes. <laughs> Outstanding Call of Duty player as well, by the way. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh! Ne- honestly, next level, next level. Really? I, um, just, just just through just through being a young guy that probably grew up in that environment. Other than that, well, well I like to think that I grew up in that environment. But he honestly, he's 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 a hacker. He's hacking. <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, and he played, he had a really good, um, good, uh, 20, 30 minutes before he unfortunately went off with a head knock. Mm-hmm. And like you say, then Hodgie, Hodgie stepped up really well as well. Mm-hmm. So we've got a lot of depth and obviously missing, um, missing a few boys in the back row from the weekend as well. Like, uh, mm-hmm. like Jim Ritchie and, and Maggie and stuff like that. So it's, it's really, um, yeah, all good signs for Edinburgh and, uh, hopefully we'll, uh, get another, another good result this weekend. Well, Rach, Hamish, as ever, is uh, he's just such a kind of enthusiastic guy around rugby. Great to have on. He's been on a few times, but he, he talks so well about rugby, but he's got that wee bit kind of humour in him as well. He's a, he's a real star, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. It was funny to hear a little bit of uh, his perspective from, from what he thought of Glasgow, which um, I thought was quite funny. Uh, but no, yeah, great to hear how kind of much they're enjoying being back in and, and building momentum. And you were particularly interested in the stuff around the breakdown um, for, for you take the field again playing the back row playing hooker wherever um, did you learn anything from that or is it just almost a underlining what you've seen from the games you've watched already yeah I think it's just underlining stuff we've had a lot of information out um, as players and I guess it's kind of, when, what, kind of one of those where you can read and see a lot and I think until we get into it and, yeah. and give it a go so that's why it's quite interesting hearing from him now having probably had the same amount of kind of information fed in and done the work and training but to actually do it in real life you know is it as different as everyone talks about at the moment and and that kind of thing so I think it's a really good perspective but it does sound like it's just going to be a kind of learn on the job type of thing for everyone as we get going. I was really impressed as well by how positive he was around the I mean you yeah. keep saying changes are not changes just reinforcements of what's already there applications law applications but he was really uh, positive around them and also really clear about the McKinney coming in from the side and at the 45 degree angle. I mean, that he got a bad injury, I think, against Ireland. Yeah. And we see it, but it might be close to his, his like, playing style. But it, it's really quite reassuring to know that the, the governing body are getting it right. This has to be looked at. Well, I think completely. Like, I think for a player like him who is, you know, a breakdown specialist, there is such a big risk versus reward there with, um, with what he's doing. So to put your body in that very, you know, what's the word position. vulnerable position to know that you could have someone come in flying in from the side really is extremely brave so to know for someone like him that it's now mm. going to be policed and and refed appropriately is is so positive um and I think it makes for a much more interesting game as well and a lot more opportunity for as he says you know they were probably getting more steals than than they're used to and players who wouldn't normally get one were getting one so it makes it a bit more exciting breakdown specialist it's a great great type to bring in Al Kellogg <laughs> Ever <laughs> been summed up as a breakdown specialist, Al? Uh, we've all got a seven on our back, Mossy. We all play with a seven on our back. Uh, yours is about six foot nine off the ground, though. <laughs> the number seven on your back. By the time I got down there, I stood the ball, somebody that already smacked me. That was fascinating <laughs> listening to you guys. It sounds, I, I, I have to apologise for being slightly behind schedule. There's been a few things on today, but it sounds as if you had a great chat. I've got yeah. to say, though, Hamish, Hamish has got to be an advocate of the way the, the law has been interpreted now because it suits him perfectly. Like, for me, and I don't, I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to your in-depth interview, but you win the race, you win, you win the ball, defence or attack. Hamish, Hamish, both in defence and attack, mm-hmm. the majority of times, wins the race. Mm-hmm. So he's going to get more turnovers off this. Yeah, You're right. And the fact that we spoke about was lifting the ball, actually winning the turnover. It's no good now just to, to park up over that in that jackal position and, and not try and win the ball. But you're right, he wins uh, He wins most of the races. And that's the brilliant thing about it. We talk about bravery, we talk about courage, we talk about strength and technique. Actually, if you're, if you're really sharp in the mind, if you can read the game and get in, win that ball, that's your rewarding decision-making and intelligence in the field, which sometimes gets forgotten about when, when we... We kind of get caught up in the, the gladiatorial physical yeah. battle around me, but um, if you get getting quick enough, it's going to be fascinating to see how it's refereed because there are certain referees, and Nigel Owen springs to mind, who let the breakdown unfold. Like mm. he was probably the guy who let the breakdown go, go on the longest. So you think he'll maybe, his instinct will maybe 
can he struggle with this initially till he gets used to it? Yeah, well, I think that the way that he refereed, and he was world leading in this, that he, he, he let a fair battle, if you like, mm-hmm. when it happened. You contest. Know, contest. If you're in there and you're over the ball, he would let three or four seconds go by to see whether you could survive that. Whereas mm-hmm. now, that's gone. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see the referees who, in the past, would have had a tendency to, to let that contest unfold, whether they'll go to the way Mikey Adamson refereed at the weekend, which, mm-hmm. you know, he was, he was and other games that we've seen he was quick in the whistle you know if you win that battle and you, you can get a clear shot at it then that was good enough for the panel OK so we look ahead to this week the second uh, or the, the back-to-back games and a, a big change folks uh, in terms of spectators being allowed now this is a this is a, a huge step forward the eyes of the the kind of sporting community really uh, the the events community will be on BT Murrayfield on Sunday night it's so much hard work has gone into this planning preparation foresight forward thinking that comes with a lot of responsibility but, but we're going to get some some fans in and a pilot event to BT Murrayfield on Friday night and that's uh, that's great news for everyone involved and a, a lot of responsibility as well yeah definitely I think what you say there is it it's not just a sporting environment. It's as, exactly as you say, a sporting community, the event community as well. It's the first kind of mass gathering. Now, we're talking about 600 fans or so in a stadium that holds over 67,000. Um, so it, it will be done exactly in the right way because people haven't been out. That's the other mm-hmm. thing. People haven't been to a live sporting event. So you need to you need to provide a platform that, that gives people confidence in being there. Um and I know there's been a huge amount of uh, uh, work going on in the background with the Scottish Government to, to get this pilot event to go ahead. Um, and with the 14th of September being a day that everybody's got their eyes on as far as kind of wider opening up of, of, of stadium around uh, uh, Scotland, this is about proving best practice, I suppose. It's about learning from it. It's about making sure that they can, as I say, provide that confidence. But how good will it be to, to have fans in there making a wee bit of noise? Like we were both working at that game uh, uh, at the weekend, Mossy, and it's a funny old atmosphere when there's mm. nobody in there at all. And the, the loudest people actually were either the commentators, I could hear you guys speaking from where <laughs> I was, or the subs. The subs were the, the ones subs. generating the atmosphere. So mm. a few fans in there will make it a big difference. I think this is the first sporting event, certainly in Scotland, that mm. there'll be any crowds in at all. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, down, uh, down south, um, I believe the snooker had the, the final uh, had, had some fans in. Um, but this will be, you know, this is this is leading the way. And as you say, Mossy, it comes with a huge amount of responsibility. But the work that's been going on, not just uh, uh, recently, but the, the long-term work that's going on to, to building back towards us, I'm sure we'll set it off in, uh, in a great manner. And some of that work includes staggered arrival times. If it's six, 700 spectators, they're going to open... Uh, a huge amount of turnstiles, there's going to be one-way systems, all the sanitisation. Hopefully it goes well. Um, certainly it's, it's been planned particularly well, but, but, um, but hopefully it gives people confidence as well and, and it makes a difference. And, and the, the, the people who are lucky enough to, to come along do have a, a great experience and, and get treated to another cracking game of rugby. Uh, from, what, from what I understand, the, the bulk of the tickets, as you expect, will go to, to Edinburgh's fans. You said Edinburgh's home game as well. But from a Glasgow point of view, the, the comms that are going out from Glasgow highlight the fact that this takes everybody one step closer to getting mm-hmm. back into to be able to support their team in, in whichever sport you're, you're involved in. But from a Glasgow fan's point of view, one step closer to getting into Scotland as well to cheer on Glasgow in some of these Pro 14 games. Um, and yeah, the players, you saw a lot of the players talking about how, the, how strange the atmosphere was for them. Um, so I think they'll be delighted that there'll be a bit more noise in behind. Just before we finish up today, guys, in, in other news, there is a, a certain kit launch happening this Friday as the, the new men's and women national teams kit is, uh, is put out for all to see. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see. We don't want to give away any spoilers, but from your guys' point of view, the jersey you play in, what it look, looks like, feels like, does it make any difference, Rach, or are you just, you know, get on and go? I'd be lying if I said it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that Mossy's going to say exactly the opposite of that. <laughs> Get it on and go. No, <laughs> because comfort is key to playing well, so it's got to fit nicely. Um, yeah, look good, play good. <laughs> what about you, Mossy? Ah. You, I, I seem to remember you. You were in a, in a and you were doing the, 
in front of the mirror and giving it a bit of that. <laughs> right, I don't do any of that. I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> you know, taking selfies before the game just to make sure you look tall. Right? Was that, was that's me. That, that, that's me. That's me in a nutshell, Al. You've got me. Eh? <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, it's, I think it's it's important as Rich says to 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 be comfortable to to look better. It's filling the jersey, Al. You're old saying that it's the filling of it that is the most important thing, but. Um, it is. It, it's great to have uh, different jerseys. And the, it's weird. Different memories do uh, come into mind if you go up the the attic and pull out a, an old cap jersey, and it's a it's a light blue one, or it's a white one, or it's an orange one, or it's this one, and and it actually takes you right back to the kind of memories. So you've got uh, my kind of career is a wee bit documented or, or bookmarked with different jerseys. So they all mean something special. But um, yeah. Let's hope, a, let's hope it's a cracker. I'm sure it will be that comes out in the weekend and, it's, uh, and the fans like it. You know what, Moshe, when you, just when you say that, the, one that, the, the memory that stuck in my mind actually is you in the tangerine top. Mm-hmm. My second cap was uh, in the orange one. I, my first cap was the 99 World Cup in Spain and then the Six Nations in 2000 uh, against France was my second cap. Um, Did you score a try or? No, so, I, there's a moment. There's a photo of you from that game that I, I've seen. It's maybe one that's up at uh, kicked a couple of goals. goals. Kicked ah, a couple of goals. I run into the post. <laughs> that might be the moment you're on about. The like, high ball. Gerard Merceron was a standoff for France. I don't know. You've got me. You've got me. You've got me losing time here. <laughs> uh, and obviously, you're playing France. I like a high ball. They, they know fine well. There's this 21 year old guy at fullback who's getting his second cap, and he'll be nervous. So. The very t- first touchy ball. You expect it, you know it's coming. Thump, it goes up in the air. And all I can think of is all the coaches, the family just say, just keep your eye on the ball. Just keep your eye on the ball. Keep your elbows in. Get, keep your eye on the ball. Take this high kick. And it was up there for ages. Uh, and I did that. I took it. I kept my eye on the ball. But I kept my eye on the ball so specifically that I ran flat out into the post pad as I caught the ball. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> uh, somehow it stuck in my hands and I managed to get a kick away to touch. But I thought, well, there's more to life than keeping your eye on the ball. You have to keep your eye on the post as well. But yeah, that was in the orange, that was in the orange jersey. That's uh, uh, that's my bit. Of, that's my bit. I'm a jump that'll tick, be, you know. That'll be the image. I hear you. This any crazy guy desperate to catch smack at the post. Thank goodness for post pads, <laughs> or I could have been off with a pretty severe HIA early on. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope, I hope you enjoyed rugby being back at the weekend. I hope you enjoy the the game we've got coming up um, at the weekend on Friday night with Glasgow taking on Edinburgh again. And keep your eye open for that kit launch on, on Friday morning. Once again, thanks for listening to the official Scottish Rugby Podcast.